Chef Laura and I'm with Wellness in Schools and this year we have been at Key Biscayne K-8 Center and we are teaching the kids how to cook. There's a lot of reasons we're teaching them to cook. The first one is it's healthier. When you're cooking at home you get to choose the ingredients and you get to choose healthy ingredients to cook with. Also at the end of the day everyone's going to eventually move out of mom and dad's house so I don't want them eating cereal for dinner teaching them some basic recipes. We've made a chili this year, we made some salad dressings, we made a tomato sauce, and then today we are making a roasted potato, which we're marketing as healthy french fries. Um, I want the children to be familiar with ingredients, knowing how to read labels, because at the end of the day, food is the first stop for your health. We are going to be making roasted potatoes, and we are being filmed. We're being filmed so that everybody on the whole island can learn how to roast potatoes. So did you guys wash your hands before you came in? Yes. yes. Who wants to tell me why we wash our hands? So we don't get them dirty and so we don't get cheats having. Very, very good. Yes? So we don't get germs and we don't get sick. Yes? If you have a virus, you can't spread it to someone else. Yes? Exactly. It would get the food would get infected and you would get really really sick. Yeah, so then you get sick, you have to go to the doctor, and you can't come to school and you can't learn. But normally when we start the cooking classes, <clears throat> I tell you guys ways we can be safe in the kitchen. But today, since we've done it so many times, I want you guys to tell me ways we can be safe in the kitchen. Do not put your hands close to the knife. Yes, very good. Um, do not put your hand over a burning stove. Very, very good. So, no double dipping. We talked about that with the salads. Don't put your hand in boiling water. Yes, yes, very, very good. Um, be careful with the knife. Yes. Hold the knife and not the side that doesn't have the thing you spike. Yes, very good. Oh, um, when you cook, if you're a kid and you're cooking, you always should have a phone. Yes, very good. Also, when you're in the kitchen, there's all sorts of things in there like heat and sharp things and sometimes like your brother or sister might be in there and you didn't see them come in or maybe your dog runs in and you didn't hear them. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to what's going on around you and you want to be able to listen to your food. You can hear it when water starts to boil. You can hear onions start to burn. When you first put onions in a pan and it's really, really loud and they're sizzling and if you don't stir them, they're going to get more and more quiet. And the more quiet the onions get, the more they're trying to burn. So, I know a lot of times with food, you think about seeing the food and smelling the food and tasting the food and grabbing the food, but you can also listen to the food. So we're going to be using knives today. So we're going to be careful with our knives. We're going to watch our fingers. And then I'm going to be roasting potatoes in this little oven at 450 degrees. Oh, That's wow. so, so hot. Wow. So, it's gonna be super crispy. So I'm gonna make sure I use a pot holder. If you guys are gonna be using the <laughs> oven or the stove at home, you have to make sure that an adult is with you and helping you. And then a couple other things, ways to be safe in the kitchen, is listening and paying attention. We are gonna be doing a new recipe today, and I want you guys to go home and make this recipe with your brothers and your sisters and your moms and your dads and everyone in your family. And the more you listen and the more you pay attention, the easier it's going to be for you guys to remember everything when you do it at home. Also, like we said, kitchens have a lot of sharp things and a lot of hot things. So you always want to make sure you're paying attention in the kitchen. And you can hear your food cooking. You can listen, you can hear when, well yeah, you can hear it when it pops, you can hear when water boils, you can hear when onions, when they first go in a pan, they sizzle a whole lot. And when they start to get more quiet, that's when they're burning. All right, so now we're gonna talk about our recipe, but I'm going to need a volunteer to read our recipe. So I'm gonna have you read just this page right here. Four large red roast potatoes cut into eight to 10 pieces each. Spoons? Tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of rosemary, salt, pepper to taste. Very good. Remember this word here? This is an abbreviation. This is when you take a big word and you make it smaller. Um, do you guys remember which one's bigger, a teaspoon or a tablespoon? 
Very good. And how many teaspoons are in one tablespoon? Four? No, that's a good guess. Three? Yes. <laughs> so three teaspoons in one tablespoon. Yes? I made that recipe yesterday. You did? Did it turn out yummy? Yes. Good. And the first ingredient we have up there is red bliss potato. This is a red bliss potato. This one has red skin on the outside. That's why they call it a red bliss. This is the one that we're going to be using today. Did we make tomato sauce together? Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember when I told you how there's thousands of different kinds of tomatoes? Yes. Well, there's a whole lot of different kinds of potatoes also. Does anybody recognize this potato? Orange. Yeah. Yes. Sweet potato. Yes. Sweet potato. So you can see it's orange on the inside. But brown on the outside. And yes, this potato has all of the good things about potatoes. Plus, it has all the good things, with orange fruits and vegetables. So it has like a carrot. It's got vitamin A, vitamin C, has antioxidants like, called carotenoids, which help keep us nice and healthy. We have this potato here. You guys recognize this one? So this one is, does anybody know the name of this one? Yes. Which one? Dog potato. Yes. Yes, that's what everyone says. Normal or regular potato? Head potato. Head potato. <laughs> yeah. I know it. Yellow what? potato. No, but those are all really good guesses. Brown potato. It's a potato. It's called a, a russet potato. Or an Idaho potato. Idaho. And Idaho potatoes are from Idaho. These are the ones they use to make french fries and potato chips and baked potatoes. This is called a fingerling potato because he's the same shape as your finger. They come in big sizes and little sizes. These fingerling potatoes, they also come in red and they come in... Purple. 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 So this potato here has all of the great things about potatoes, plus it has all the great things that blue and purple berries have. So this helps with, yes, it's got color. So the color, yes, you could draw with this potato. If you want to put lipstick on, you can put lipstick on with this potato. Most of the vitamins and nutrients in potatoes are in the skin. So the potatoes we're going to be cutting and cooking and eating today are all going to have the skin on them. So when you guys make potatoes at home, I want to make sure you guys are eating the skin because that's where all the good stuff is. Yes. And I'm going to show you guys something. This right here in my hand, this is the same amount of potato as this. These are the same weight. Which one of these has more skin? That one. This one, yes. You see the skin goes all around each potato. So if I was to peel all the skin off of these and peel the skin off of this one, the pile of skin for these would be bigger. Yeah. So if you guys are picking, the absolute healthiest potato you can eat is a whole bunch of little purple ones. Oh my God. All the potatoes are healthy, but the more skin you eat, the more healthy they are. There are a couple things that the human body needs in order to function. This helps you grow, this gives you energy, and they're called macronutrients and micronutrients. And mac, I want you guys to remember like a mac truck. It's a big truck and there's only three of them. There's protein, there's fat, and there's carbohydrates. Potatoes have carbohydrates. So these are one of our macronutrients. This is one of the three things that every human needs. There's also something called a micronutrient. And that's like when you look in a microscope because it's a whole bunch of little tiny things. And those are all your vitamins and minerals. The next thing on our list is olive oil. This is another macronutrient. This is our fat. Do you guys remember me telling you when we made salad dressing how this is a healthy fat? Yes. So this one, first of all, it tastes really good. And second of all, it's a healthy fat for you guys, which means it's brain food. It helps your brain grow really strong and really smart. Are french fries healthy? No. no. Okay, so they don't. Does anybody in here know what kind of oil restaurants use to fry french fries? Olive oil. No, but that's a good guess. Are french fries healthy? No. no. Okay, so. They don't use olive oil, they use whatever the cheapest oil they can find. Sometimes this is soybean oil, peanut oil, corn oil, vegetable oil. 
because a bottle like this of olive oil is like six or seven dollars for olive oil. But a bottle like this of cheap oil is like one dollar. And fryers and restaurants are really, really big. They're tall, wide, and deep, and they need like 50 bottles to fill up a fryer. So they use the cheapest oil they can find. Well, this oil is not healthy for you guys. What happens over time is that something called cholesterol builds up inside your veins. And cholesterol makes it really, really hard for the blood to get around your body. And when the blood can't get around your body, it can't take the vitamins and minerals where they need to go. But you guys don't have to worry about that until you're older and there's a way to get rid of cholesterol. You can eat a lot of whole grain, whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, oatmeal. We're using olive oil today and this is a healthy fat. So this is not gonna give you guys cholesterol and this is gonna be brain food for you guys. It's gonna make your brains work a lot smarter and stronger. The next thing on our list is rosemary. Do you guys remember when we made the tomato sauce? Yes. What green herb did we tear up and put on top of our pasta? Oh, cilantro. No, but that's a good guess. That is an herb. Yes, basil. So basil is what we put on our tomato sauce. Today we're using rosemary. An herb is a green leafy vegetable that is very aromatic. Who thinks they know what aromatic means? Smells very good. Yes. So I'm going to give this to you guys to smell. I want you to smell it and, and pass it to the row behind you to smell. What does it smell like? Kind of like a Christmas tree? It smells so good. And remember, guys, since we are making this recipe ourselves, we can pick the ingredients. We're picking potatoes. We're picking olive oil. If you guys don't like rosemary, you don't have to put it in there when you make it at home. Can we eat it? The rosemary? Yes. But we're going to eat it on the potatoes, too. And do you guys remember when we made salad dressing? Yeah. And we talked about how you don't have to follow the recipe at home? If you don't like rosemary, you don't have to put rosemary. You can add thyme. Yes, you can add thyme, you can add basil, you can add oregano, you can add whatever herb you want. You can also roast other vegetables. You can roast cauliflower, you can roast broccoli, you can roast corn, you can roast apples, all sorts of things. I'm going to remind you guys about our knives. So you're going to take the hand that you write with. You're going to hold on to your knife like you're saying what? Hello, Hello knife. When you pass your knife, you want to hold this part, not the sharp part, and you want to pass it to the next person they, so they can say what? Hello, knife. And nobody says, Hello, Hello hospital. Right? Because that's no fun. You guys all have a cutting board in front of you. You guys don't need to lift your cutting boards up, but underneath your cutting board is a wet paper towel. This is going to keep your cutting board from sliding around. You guys are each going to get a potato. There's a cut side to the potato, and there's a round side to the potato. If you put your potato cut round side down, it's going to wobble. If it wobbles, you might hurt yourself. I want you guys to put the flat side down. With your other hand, the hand not holding the knife, you're going to make a claw, like a bear or a tiger or a lion or an eagle or whatever ferocious animal you want to be. And that's what's going to hold your potato. You're going to cut your potato in half, then you're going to turn your potato. That way you don't have to turn your knife or your body. And you're going to cut your potato into eight or ten pieces, depending on your potato. Every potato is a little bit different. The knives are not very sharp, and the potatoes are kind of hard. So I want you guys to just try your best. If your potato falls on the floor, it's okay, because we're going to wash them off at the end. I want you guys to try your best to get them all about this size here. The reason is, what do you guys think would happen if I put a potato like this and a potato like this in the oven at the same time. That one will get burned a this one's going to burn before this one gets cooked. So whenever you're cutting vegetables or cutting chicken or cutting anything to put in the oven or roast in a pan or cook in a pan, you want to make sure they're all about the same size. You can eat raw potatoes, but they do not taste good. And if you eat too many, they give you a tummy ache. So we're going to pass out knives and potatoes to you guys. And as soon as you get your knives and your potatoes, you can start cutting. They do look like apples.
tries. You guys did such a good job cutting these potatoes. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys a chef trick. So when restaurants make french fries and potato chips, they cut them the day before they need them and they soak them in water overnight. Then they rinse them off the next day at the restaurant. And there's a reason for this. Potatoes have something inside of them called starch. Starch, when it's eaten or heated, it turns into sugar. Do you guys remember how we talked about how tomatoes naturally have sugar inside of them? So when we made our tomato sauce, we wanted to stir it if we were going to use high heat. And if we weren't going to stir it a lot, we were going to turn the heat really low. Because when sugar gets hot, it burns. And rinse under cold water until starch is removed and water is clear. Drain potatoes well and place them in the bowl. Toss with olive oil, rosemary, salt, and pepper. Place on oil and heated baking sheet and put in oven. But if you rinse potatoes off, it rinses some of the starch out of the potato. And I'm going to show you guys what the water looks like. See how cloudy that water is? So that's starch. And starch is not bad for you. There is nothing wrong with starch. Starch is totally healthy. But I don't want extra starch on my potatoes because if I have extra starch on my potatoes, when I put them in my oven at 450 degrees, they're gonna burn. I want them to be crispy. So I'm gonna rinse off all the extra starch. And you can only rinse starch off potatoes when they're cut. If they're whole potatoes, it doesn't rinse the starch off. So while we're rinsing the potatoes, I'm gonna need you to read the rest of our recipe up here. Golden brown, about 20 more Very good. So now you guys can see how clear the water is, right? So now the potatoes, we got all the extra starch off of them. So now I'm going to take my potatoes and I'm going to drain them really good. So I want to make sure all the water's off of them. And I'm going I'm to put them in our bowl. We are going to add a little bit of pepper. When you're making this at home, if you don't like pepper, you don't have to add it. If you love pepper, you can add extra pepper. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on our potatoes. I have rosemary that I cut up before you guys came here today because remember when you rip up or cut herbs, it helps release some of their flavor. And if you don't like rosemary, when you're making this at home, you don't have to put it in. And then I'm going to put our olive oil. How many tablespoons of olive oil do I need to put in our potatoes? Yes. So I need you guys to help me count. One, two, three. Very good. Because I want every single part of every single potato to be coated with oil. And the reason is because when oil gets hot, it gets really hot and it stays really hot. So if each potato is coated with oil, that means the outside of each one of these potatoes is going to get really, really hot. And when that happens to vegetables, they get really, really crispy. So I want these to kind of be like healthy french fries. The only difference between these and french fries is that these are a different shape. So now I have my potatoes all mixed up with my salt, my pepper, my rosemary, my oil. And I'm going to take my pan and I'm going to put some olive oil on my pan. Does anybody know why you want to put olive oil? Also, if they stick to the pan, that's that much less potato I get to eat. And you can use olive oil, you can use coconut oil, you can use those sprays at home. Just make sure that you're reading the label on the spray. So now I'm gonna put my potatoes in one layer on here. And I'm putting them in one layer for the same reason that I wanted them to be the same size. Because if they're in one layer and they're not too many on the pan, they're gonna cook evenly. Margarine, it's a kind of fake butter that they sell near real butter. And some people think it's healthier because it's not butter because it has less fat on it. But the fat it does have is not the good kind of fat. I'm going to put these into my oven and cook them for about 35 or 40 minutes at 450 degrees. Roast broccoli and cauliflower and asparagus, all these kind of vegetables. You can use this same recipe and you still want to cook them at 450 degrees 
but you're going to cook them for less time. Like asparagus might only take 10 minutes. Last week in the middle school cafeteria, the ladies in the cafeteria let me roast the broccoli. And they let me put some garlic on it, some salt, and some oil. And it turned out really good. So next week, when you guys see broccoli in the cafeteria, it's going to be roasted broccoli instead of steamed broccoli. Well, since the cafeteria is letting us roast broccoli, I thought it would be nice if we told them thank you. So when you guys leave today, if you want to, you can sign the card over there to all the cafeteria ladies. And all you have to do is write thank you in your name. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, yes? She did? Awesome. You're very lucky. You have a very wonderful mother, don't you? <laughs> um, do you guys want to try the potatoes? Yes. yes? Okay. Before you guys go home today, I'm going to give your teacher these and she's going to give these to you to take home. And this has the recipe we made today for the roasted potato. It has a potato soup recipe, a mashed sweet potato recipe, and a potato salad recipe. Thumbs up? Two. Two thumbs up. <laughs> but you tried it, yes? No, good. Who thinks they're going to try and make these at home this week? Excellent. Who thinks they're going to try and make a different roasted vegetable at home? Broccoli is a good one. Asparagus. Yes, yum. Asparagus? Yes, I love roasted cauliflower. Carrots. Carrots. <gasps> carrots are really good, and I'm going to tell you guys a secret about carrots. Carrots, when you roast them, the water that's in carrots, and all vegetables have water inside of them, the water inside evaporates, and the carrots get really, really, really sweet, almost like candy. So I'm gonna have you guys, before you leave, take your cups and throw them in the trash can, and I'm gonna have you guys push your chairs in. If nobody has any more questions, then I wanna thank you guys for coming. Did you guys learn anything? Yes. Did you have fun? Yes. Good. But you can make them at home. Oh, thank you guys for helping and thank you guys for making delicious potatoes. Thank you.